Welcome back everyone. Today we are checking out the Fuel EXE 9.8. This is running the full Shimano XT drivetrain which has been running great. But I do have some choice words about the overall package and what I think of it. So let's just get straight into it. So I've rode this now over an XC track and the wide ranging single track kind of enduro style. Leaning more single track but fast flowy steep hills. Overall, it rides great. I'm not sure it's for me, but it definitely has a place in this world. The XT shifting works so good. It's snappy, it's responsive. I have SLX mixed with XT on my bike, and is it a world of an upgrade? No, but it's definitely a little more rigid and snappy, like when you push that button, it really responds to your shift. Braking wide, you got four piston XT brakes. Again, they feel great, very responsive, good modulation to them. So overall, you get a lot of control without being too sensitive to it, which is a kind of delicate balance. You want powerful brakes, but you don't want to flip over the handlebars as soon as you touch them. So getting that correct modulation and feel from them is really critical. Let's go over the points I do like about this bike. One, it looks fantastic. It, I think, is a big improvement over previous years. Looks a little more aggressive. Same with the new Fuel EXs, takes that kind of YT frame shape where you've got extra triangles. You still have the adjustable geometry just like the Fuel EXs, so there's a big capable bike here. Everything you can do with the regular Fuel EX, you can essentially do with this to make it a little more enduro, a little more off-road or mountain downhill kind of setup. It still is a true all-mountain trail bike and it performs superbly well. The electric system works really, really well. The Trek Central app is really easy to use and takes a bit of kind of using the bike and the app together to figure out exactly where you want those settings. With this one, I have the low mode set as low as it'll go, so it's only giving me 30 extra watts. The high mode giving me the full 300 and the middle mode right in the middle at 150. So to me, that's a nice balance. In the lowest mode, you can 100% feel it makes a difference, but it's not life-changing. It's like going from a gravel road or a dirt path where you have a bit of resistance to perfectly paved, and you just feel like, oh, I'm under the same effort pedaling a little bit faster. Very minimal, almost non-noticeable, without a lot of experience on a bike. Most people I've heard who've rode it in that mode say it doesn't even feel like it's doing anything. It definitely is. The middle mode, which I have set as 150 and middle responsiveness for the pedals it is a little bit too much even for me i think i might tone it down a little bit to make it a little more man powered a little more human powered instead of just being the bike it really takes over you can really feel it's turned on it's activated and honestly it's an e-bike at that point whereas the other one i think just brings it just takes that teeny bit of a bite away you still get some effort but there's a teeny bit less bite and you can just hold those paces for a lot longer without overexerting yourself. A middle one is definitely an e-bike, it's pumping along, no problem. Mode three is 300 watts extra power, and I have seen it peak over that, so that's a little interesting. It does give you a display on the bike. That is just an e-bike, it flies up hills, it's controllable. I've taken some shots here, I've taken some on the North Hill. Overall, it, it just works really well. It's snappy, it's responsive, it's powerful, and I have the pedal reaction kind of time set at high as well it works very well and is extremely powerful without being that kind of crazy e-bike torquiness which almost throws you off the bike there is a couple times i've been riding this and it's almost like you just have to get used to it and be ready for it and get that balance right so you're not going to tip up as it kind of accelerates on the inclines with that aggressiveness. It's definitely more low key than something like a Santa Cruz Heckler or something with those bigger motors and bigger batteries to it. A couple things I don't like about this bike is the RSL carbon bar. I don't know why I rode out here, so it's about 14K bike ride on kind of gravel, just flat gravel grinding it out. My hands kind of went numb on it and I don't know if that's position or whatnot. Obviously it's a demo bike, so I don't have it perfectly set up, but it's pretty good. The downside to that is you are limited. You can literally go up and down on the stem and that's about it. There's no roll, there's no adjustment in that way. And that is a bit of a disappointment in that aspect, but it looks really cool. And I guess it's lighter weight, which on an e-bike, I don't know if people really care. The carbon frame is nice. I don't think I notice it as much as I do on my Fuel X 9.7, which is snappy responsive. I think 
the battery and the motor give it a little more play i don't know if it's just in my head or not it feels stiff but it doesn't feel as stiff as my carbon bike which is the same bike without the electric motor and battery or it's a mental thing that i am hearing the battery and motor creak within the bike it trek put out all these videos oh it's the quietest bike it's amazing it, it is very quiet e-bike a lot of e-bikes even in the lowest modes have a little whine to them this one doesn't until you get to those high modes and you're climbing the hill and you do hear an electric whine it's an electric bike there's no getting away from that it's not like crazy loud but it's it's there what they didn't mention though and i've not seen many people mention in any of their videos is the creaking so creaking where obviously the battery movement and the motor movement just shimmies a little bit and you can hear it creaking away when you're riding, especially under pressure. When you're kind of cruising along, flowing, not too much, you're climbing a hill and kind of talking the bike around, it creaks. And I don't think that is something you could just get rid of by tightening bolts, cleaning things, stopping things. There's a battery which is sat in there which will have a little movement. There's a motor which is going to be rubbing against frame and that's got a plastic shell and a metal shell. Like it's, there's too many parts for it not to creak. So not really a complaint. It's an e-bike. You should expect some noise. They're not silent. I don't know why a lot of people want them to be silent. But it works well. It looks great. Like this doesn't even look like an e-bike. Range has been successful so far. I haven't run out. I can really burn through it if I want to. But I think with some customization on the Trek Central app where you can really reduce that top end power, you'd gain a lot. In Eco, at the lowest watts, it's telling me I'm gonna get over 200 kilometers when I start. So that could be great. It's hard to ride in that lower mode um, without wanting to go higher because you're on an e-bike. So you'd have to take a lot of mental grit to do that. But I do think it's an excellent overall package. Price-wise, you are over the $11,000 mark in Canadian dollars, $10,000 US dollars. So it's not a cheap package. The suspension works great. The parts work great. E-bike works great. Carbon frame is nice. Overall, great package. Price-wise, I'm not super offended with, you know, when you're comparing it to like a Santa Cruz Heckler again, carbon bike, bigger battery, bigger motor. You're in that same price range. I don't think getting a lighter weight, smaller motor would mean it costs less. I could see it priced pretty much exactly where it's at. It does work really well. It does not come with the electric drop post. We put that on as a demo one. So it's just easier to move for other people to adjust. This I think is the e-bike for everyone. Now, they did just release the aluminum model, which carbon, it's stiff anyway. The aluminum one's gonna be stiff because you got reinforcements for that battery to go in there. A lot of the benefits they put on this, carbon rims, carbon frame, carbon bar. I don't know if it's all that necessary. Um, they normally shave off weight and get you stiffer ride quality so it's a little easier to control. I think in even the aluminum version, you're gonna have a stiff, easy to ride bike. Now this thing is only 38 pounds, so it is quite light. You put it into the aluminum one, you gotta be over 45 or just about there so it's it is a noticeable difference but you're paying for a lot of it i just don't know if e-bikers are going to care as much it's not really whether someone would want this or not <clears throat> it's will they care enough and is this package something people will want obviously if you make it there's always someone out there who wants the best of the best and this is pretty much up there with it the aluminum version though could be a really good price point to get a lot of people into it whether the ex bikers who want to keep up with the faster crowd just getting into it and they want to like ease into it, it would be hard to start an e bike and eventually upgrade to a non e bike. But at least you'd be out there riding and you'd be able to push your distances a lot further with a lot less effort. I don't know if you're going to be going significantly further than you normally would. I think for me, if I took my 15K ride out here, did 20Ks in the trails and then 15K ride out, I'm gonna be pretty much maxing out this battery. You can get that little adapter battery, but then again, now you're kind of defeating the purpose of having a lightweight e-bike again. It all circles around. I'm not really sure. If you're looking for the best mountain bike, which happens to be an e-bike, this style of bike is where you wanna go. The Fuel X-E 
is where you want to go. It feels like a mountain bike, does have a little more weight to it, you can feel it a little more centrally. And as with any e-bike, but with those it's like, you forgive it because it's so big, you're like, wow, I barely feel it compared to what it is. Whereas something like this is so small that you kind of penalize it because it's noticeable. It's unfair, I know, but that's how it works to me. No downsides on it. If you want the best mountain bike, which is an e-bike, this is the package you should look at, or this is the model you should look at, and go from there to find out what your needs are after that. I do think Trek's onto something here. I think a lot of people will like this category. That being said, the regular e-bikes are extremely accessible. You get bigger battery, more range, you don't need as fancy parts because a lot of people who are buying them don't want that fancy stuff. They just want to get out there, adventure, explore. And this one is definitely the mountain biker's e-bike. A Santa Cruz Heckler, for example, would be more like a mountain biker's second bike. So they'd have this one, a regular bike and a Heckler. I don't think you'd ever own this and a mountain bike at the same time. This is a replacement for your mountain bike. The Heckler or those bigger e-bikes like the Rail or something like that, they are a whole different category of bike meant for something else. All right guys, hopefully this bird didn't ruin the video and I hope you enjoyed it. It is a fantastic bike and I think you'll like it. It is very much a mountain bike and I think that's a good thing. I think we're onto something here. All right, let's get out of here.